हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी इन कंटीन्यूअस टाइम सिग्नल्स frequency in signal processing is the fundamental concept across engineering and sciences so frequency in signal processing is the basic concept in engineering as well as science it is essential for system design so the frequency analysis is very much essential for system design the applications of frequency analysis are in the radio receivers filtering and oscillatory systems so the frequency analysis are very much important in radio receivers filtering and oscillatory systems here let us understand how the frequency behaves in continuous time and discrete time signals in this video we'll understand specifically how the frequency will behave in continuous time signal this is the example of continuous time signal which represents a sinusoidal signal with a time period tp and amplitude a so from this time period tp we can find the frequency of the signal by using this formula so continuous time sinusoidal signal can be represented as x a of t is equal to a cos omega t plus theta so here omega is the frequency of the signal usually the frequency is represented by f which we can relate it with omega by using the equation omega is equal to 2 pi f so this is how we can relate omega with frequency f now if we substitute omega is equal to 2 pi f in this equation so we will get x a of t is equal to a cos 2 pi f t plus theta so this is the mathematical representation of continuous time sinusoidal signal so the mathematical representation of the continuous time sinusoidal signal is x a of t is equal to a cos 2 pi f t plus theta so here a represents the amplitude that determines the signal strength f is the frequency that represents the oscillations per second in hertz and theta is the phase that indicates signal shift along the time axis example of this mathematical representation is sinusoidal waveform of a analog signal which is represented in this waveform now let us understand the properties of continuous time sinusoidal signal first property is periodicity for a given frequency f the signal has period tp so this we have understood in our previous figure where tp can be represented as 1 by f so from this equation we can find the frequency of signal by taking the formula f is equal to 1 by tp so the time period and frequency are inversely proportional the second property is distinct frequencies the signal with different frequencies are unique in character so the different frequencies are unique in character this you need to remember next property is oscillation rate higher frequency results in a faster rate of oscillation within a fixed interval so as the frequency increase the oscillation of the signal will also increase so as the frequency increase the rate of oscillation will also increase the complex exponential of continuous time signal the continuous time signal can also be represented as complex exponential by using the formula x a of t is equal to a multiplied with exponential to the power of j 2 pi f t plus theta so this is the representation of continuous time signal in terms of complex exponential so we can relate the complex exponential with sinusoidal function 
by using the formula exponential to the power of plus r minus j phi is equal to cos phi plus r minus j sin phi so from this equation we can understand that we can relate a complex exponential with a sinusoidal function so this mathematical function is known as Euler's identity we can also represent the sinusoidal signal using the formula a by 2 exponential to the power of j omega t plus theta plus a by 2 exponential to the power of minus j omega t plus theta now let us understand the frequency range the analog signals are represented within the frequency range minus infinity to infinity so this is the frequency range of analog signal so this includes both negative frequency as well as positive frequency now let us understand positive and negative frequencies this diagram represents the cosine function using complex conjugate exponential which is also known as a phasor this diagram shows the complex plane with a horizontal axis labeled as a real part and vertical axis labeled as imaginary part the cosine function can be represented as the sum of two rotating phasors as you can see here we are having one rotating phasor in anti-clockwise direction and we are having a rotating phasor in clockwise direction so some of these rotating phasor represents the cosine function in terms of complex exponential which we understood in our previous equation so here two phasors rotate in opposite direction one in clockwise direction and another in anti-clockwise direction the angle omega t plus theta represents the phase of each phasor at time t where omega is the angular frequency and theta is the initial phase of the signal so one phase will rotate in anti-clockwise direction and another phase will rotate in clockwise direction the amplitude of phasor is given by a by 2 which is half of the amplitude of a sinusoidal signal we are taking half of the amplitude because the total amplitude of sinusoidal signal is obtained by combining the contribution of both the phasors so here the positive frequency is represented by counterclockwise rotation in complex plane which represents analogous to oscillatory behavior and negative frequency is represented by clockwise rotation which is used for signal representation it does not represent the physical negative oscillation rate phasor is used to represent the sinusoidal signals these signals are represented by pair of complex conjugate exponential phasors which is shown in this figure these complex conjugate exponential phasors illustrate the frequency behavior visually as shown in this figure this is about the concept of frequency in continuous time signal hope you have understood the topic thank you